hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you are new here kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put your notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to cut and sew a cow neck top with a collar i made use of a duchess satin fabric and the amount of this fabric i used is two yards the first step is to mark the measurement of the back piece on a pattern paper and this paper will later be used as a template in cutting the back piece and the front piece of this top. So let's get started. The first line is the starting line which also serves as the shoulder line. On the shoulder line, I placed my tape from this fold to mark the neck width which is 3 inches. For a plus size person, you should mark 4 inches. Now for the neck depth, I'll be marking just 1 inch to connect the neck width to the neck depth. I placed my tape on the shoulder line to mark my shoulder measurements divided by 2 plus half an inch sewing allowance which made it 7.5 inches. And to get the shoulder slope, I placed my tape on this point vertically to mark 1 inch which I connected to the neck width. The next step is to mark the armhole line. I placed my tape on the shoulder tip vertically. To so mark my arm or circumference divided by 2, which is 8 inches. Now I would place my ruler on this point horizontally to mark the bust line. The next step is to place my tape on the shoulder line vertically to mark my waist line, which is 15.5 inches. To mark the full length of the top, I placed my tape vertically from the shoulder to mark my hip line. My hip line is 25 inches. I added one into an allowance to the end, which made it 26 inches altogether. To mark the armhole curve, I placed my tape on the armhole line and marked the midpoint and used a curved ruler to connect the midpoint to the bust line as shown. On the bust line, I placed my bust circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches sewing allowance. If I a plus size person, make use of 3 inches sewing allowance. On the waist line, I placed my waist circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches sewing allowance. On my hip line, I placed my hip circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches sewing allowance. On this side of the hip line, I placed the tape vertically to mark one inch, which I connected to the hip line as shown. Before cutting out the back piece, I added half inch sewing allowance to the top of the shoulder slope to reach the front piece and the back piece would be attached to. I placed this template on the fabric to cut out just the back piece of the top. Recall that this template was for the back piece. Now I'll be converting it to the template for the front piece. To achieve this, I placed my tape on the midpoint of the armhole line to mark half an inch inward and connected this point to the tip of the shoulder slope and to the bust line. To 
to achieve the drapes at the center neckline of the front piece i slitted the bust line and stopped somewhere at this point so i can easily adjust the upper part the next step is to place this template on the fabric so this is the fabric i folded it into two To know the wideness of the fold I needed, I divided my bust circumference into four and added about eight inches extra. The next step is to place the templates directly on the fabric, making sure that the fabric is 16 inches longer than the shoulder line of the template. To get the drape at the center of the neckline, I adjusted the upper part of the template this way. The next step is to know how deep you want the neckline to be. So you should place your tip on the neck width as shown horizontally. And this is 13 inches. If you want a deeper neck, you can leave it at 13 inches. So by the time you sew it, it becomes 12 inches. But I do not want mine to be as deep as 13 inches because I don't want my cleavage to show. So I adjusted the upper part of the template. And what I have now is 11 inches. The next step is to connect the tip of this edge to the neck width as shown. This triangular extension will help in creating a lining for the cow neck. In some cases, designers might decide to attach a lining and to do this, you just have it to make a straight line from the neck width as shown, then you cut a different triangular shape fabric to attach it but this is the best method in doing this so you don't have to start making any joining now i'll be cutting out the front piece I went ahead to make a mark on the neck width to notch it a little. So this is all for the front piece. The next step is to attach both the front piece and the back piece together. So this is the back piece. I placed the front piece directly on the back piece, shoulder to shoulder, then pinned it together. To secure the shoulder by half inch. After I secured the shoulders, the next thing I did was to secure the sides by half inch. And this is because the blouse isn't a fitted blouse. After securing the size, I took it up to the overlocking machine to weave the seams and also weave the edges of the lining.
it is not mandatory to overlock the sims at this stage because for those of us that do not have an overlocking machine you can actually complete the sewing of the top before taking it out to weave the next step is to secure the m by folding it half inch in and further folding it in by half inch all right the next step is to place the measurements of the sleeve I folded the fabric into two and I further folded the fabric into two again. So I practically folded this fabric into four and after cutting, I should have two sleeves. This is a starting line and on the starting line, I placed my tape vertically to mark the cap sleeve line, which is 4.5 inches. On the cap sleeve line, I placed my armhole circumference divided by two, which is 8 inches. And connected this point to the edge of the starting line. Now I placed my tape on the vertical line to mark the midpoint and connected the midpoint to this edge by half an inch and connected it below this line to the armhole circumference by half inch too. Now to be sure of the armhole circumference, I placed my tape on the armhole of the dress and took the measurement. Here I have 10 inches. This simply means that the armhole of the sleeve should also be 10 inches. I placed my tape on this line to mark 10 inches, after which I added 1 inch sewing allowance. The next step is to place the tape from the starting line to mark the length of the sleeve. So the length of my sleeve is actually 24 inches, but because of the band which is on the wrist side, I'll be subtracting about 5 inches from that and that will be 19 inches so i added one inch sewing allowance to the m which made it 20 inches to mark the m of this sleeve i placed my tape on the cap sleeve line i had 10 inches i subtracted one inch from that and marked nine inches on this m line as shown to connect the two points together The next step is to cut the band which will be attached to the bottom of the sleeves. Recall that I deducted 5 inches from the initial sleeve length so now I would be adding it back. So I folded the fabric into two making sure that the length of this band is 5 and half inches so by the time I attach it to the bottom of the sleeve it becomes 5 inches. Now I went ahead to fold it this way into two again. To place my wrist measurements on the sleeve opening i placed the measuring tape around my wrist making sure that it's not too tight so yeah i have eight inches i divided the eight inches into two and placed it on the sleeve opening which is four inches and added one inch sewing allowance to the side and for the upper part of the band i placed the tape on my wrist upward to mark five inches and from that five inch point I placed my tape horizontally and what I had is 9 inches so I divided it into 2 and I had 4.5 inches. Now I went ahead to mark 4.5 inches on this side and added 1 inch sewing allowance and connected both points together. Alright just make sure that you repeat the same cutting process for the other sleeve. The next step is to place a paper stay on the wrong side of the fabric. I folded the band into two to notch the center. I went ahead to place the bottom of the sleeve directly on the band. Making sure that the notched parts are aligned together. Now I took this to my sewing machine to pleat the bottom of the sleeve directly on the band by half an inch. I folded the sleeve into two equally and took this to my sewing machine to stitch the side by one inch. The next step is to attach the sleeve to the armhole of the blouse by half inch.
all right guys we're almost done with this tutorial so to make the collar i'll be taking the measurement of the neckline please make sure that the cow neck is properly arranged or you can as well lift the top to have the dripping effect before pinning the neckline To know the width of the collar, I placed my tape from the shoulder joining to mark 4 inches on the neckline. I did the same for the other side of the neckline and also marked 4 inches. Now, I'll be placing my tape from this first point to take the round neckline measurement. And when I got to this other point, I had 16.5 inches. I folded the paper into two and this will be used as a template for the collar. So the neckline measurement was 16.5 inches. I folded the tape to get half of 16.5 inches and placed it on this line. And the length of the collar is 3 inches. I connected the points together. To achieve the color spread, I added one inch to the upper width as shown. The next step is to mark half inch on this side and connect the points together. I'll be placing this template on the paper stay to cut out two pieces. After cutting out two pieces using the template, I placed the interfacing on the main fabric and added half inch allowance to the side. The next step is to place both collars on each other to secure the sides by half inch. So I came up by half inch away from the edges to secure the sides by half inch. So when I go here, I stopped half inch above the edges also. After I secured the collar, I folded the collar into two to mark the center. And also folded the neckline for the back piece alone to also notch the center. Now I placed the collar directly on the neckline, making sure that both notch parts aligned together. I'll pin this together to take this to my sewing machine to secure it by half inch. Take note that the collar is placed on the wrong side of the fabric. Alright, after pinning, I took this to the sewing machine to stitch by half inch. The final step is to fold the collar into two equally and fold these edges of the collar by half inch to cover the seam of the previous joining. Alright guys, this is the final outcome of the blouse. I hope this tutorial was helpful. You should give it a try and if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe, share and like my videos and also put on the notification bell to be notified when I upload new tutorials.